Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I have today a video showing another way to use your designer series paper and this is a great way actually to use up some of your scraps. As you know, this month in July up until August 2nd, nine of our designer series papers are on sale. They're 15% off, that works out for most of them at 9.78 each. And so let me show you one of the one that we're going to be using today actually actually let me show you the card first so i was so excited when i made this card here it is is this not cute so this is using let me show you the stamp set the all for baby stamp set and the matching dies now i actually don't know i don't think i know anyone that's having a baby at the moment but um I just couldn't resist this set. A number of years ago, Stamping Up had another stamp set like this with little onesies um, and little, I don't know what, I guess this is a onesie too, I'm not sure, but they were just so cute that I just couldn't resist this, <laughs> this stamp set. So um, yeah, this is the one that we're going to be making. And this paper here is cut, these little onesies are cut from the hand penned um, paper so let me get you a closer look at this um, so it's beautiful flowers on one side and this is from a whole suite called the hand penned petals I believe so I can't get, let's see here we go and there's one more in here somewhere one two oh there we go three four five six and then on the other side are all these lovely kind of pastels um, that coordinate. And it comes in a 12 by 12 pack, um, but I like to store them. I do my paper samples like this, and then I usually make one extra one for myself, and I store them like this so they're easy to look through with the, the number, the, the order number, and then all the colors that coordinate. You can see there's a number of different colors that coordinate with this color card stops that coordinate with this paper. So anyway, let me show you how I made the card. So like I say, this is a really great way to use up some of your little scraps. So I'm going to start out doing some sponging, which if you know me, you know, is one of my favorite things to do. I've got a piece of basic white cardstock that is five and a quarter by four. And I'm actually using my Stamparatus with the foam pad in it um, and I'm going to attach my cardstock here and I'm using some um, post-it tape so I'm using some that I've already used actually but you can use it a few times it's post-it tape you can buy this on Amazon um, and it's like post-it notes it's the same kind of tackiness but it's just in a roll so it's really great, it's low tack, it's really perfect for things like this, but you can definitely use it if you have some washi tape, painter's tape, masking tape, any kind of low tack um, tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my grid on this temperatus as a guide, and I'm going to tape um, half an inch off on all sides. So half an inch would be of two squares, so I'm just gonna, in fact, what I'm gonna do to start with actually is I'm going to just to help me out a little bit let's see I'm looking for my let's just do a little bit of this I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of adhesive on the back just a tiny touch just to keep this in place while I am taping it that will help me a little bit make sure I put it really straight I was looking for my removable <coughs> adhesive, but that little tiny bit of the stamp and seal will be fine. So then I can line this up, two squares here. Let's see, maybe I'll use this as a longer piece actually on the other side. So two squares here. You can see I've used this before. And then two squares up here from the bottom. We turn on another light here. Oh, that's a bit better. It seemed like it was a bit dark. I forgot to turn one of my lights on. And then we'll do two squares. Let's see, this is a bit trickier because I've got to count one, two, 
see if that's right. And then let's see, I think I have missing one piece. Okay, let me just tear a piece. I seem to have three pieces and not four. And then we'll do this one also. Two in from the end. So one, two. These two, I think. And the nice thing is I can just clean this off afterwards. Right, now I'm going to grab my blending brushes and I need Granny Apple Green and Balmy Blue. So I'll just open those up quickly. And then the blending brushes, I like to keep one for each colour family, um, but you can definitely just have one and wash it out. When you, if you do wash it out and to change color, you need to make sure your blending brush is completely dry though, otherwise it'll smudge, you won't get a nice smooth blend. And that's why I kind of like to keep one um, for each color family. And I had bought these little um, markers, these little kind of markers on uh, Etsy. Um, and they came in a pack of eight or nine, They're super cheap. Somebody made them on their 3D printer, I think. Um, so I'll put the link to those um, after the video. So I'm going to start off with Granny Apple Green and I'm just going to go kind of in a circular motion on my ink pad and then actually I'm just going to tap off some scrap paper just on the side just a little bit and then start gently off one edge. You want to start off the edge a little bit and then I'm not putting any pressure, I'm just letting the blush brush do its work. And then I come back. I always set my brush back on the right ink pad so I don't get confused. <laughs> and then I'll come back, just tap off a little bit. Come back in with the blue. I've got a little bit of a harsh line there, but I think I can cover that up okay. So come in off the edge. That's why you want to come in, start off the edge so that you get any harsh any you know big blobs of color off it's a technical term blob and basically you just continue until you've got the desired amount of color you can leave a little kind of white space uh, in the middle or you can come all the way down and blend them to blend them together whichever you like. I'm just going to do a little bit more. And it will smooth out a little bit as it dries too. I want it just a little bit darker down the bottom. And it's quite forgiving by the time you get everything kind of on the top or all the other pieces that we're going to put on. It'll look good, even if you don't think it looks good now. All right, those are the ink pads. That's all the sponging done. And then this is the fun part where you take off the tape. You get those nice clean edges. to bring in my, um, this is also from the Stamparatus, it's one of the um, foam pads and a piece of grid paper, um, also designed to go with the Stamparatus, but I find they're really handy just for when you don't want a big large piece of grid paper, this, these work really great. So I'm going to be doing some stamping and this is a photopolymer stamp, um, stamp set, so I want to use a little bit of cushioning underneath so I get a good image. 
So first of all, I'm going to stamp the, the washing line here with, um, and you've got this great big long stamp here. And the nice thing is that you can actually, so what I did when I decided to stamp it on the first card, I just kind of laid this out. And the nice thing is, you know, you can bend it to whatever shape you like, so you could make like a really weird shaped washing line if you wanted, but I just kind of laid it out where I thought I wanted it on the card and what kind of shape. So kind of like that. And then I just put my block on it. And then I'll grab my ink. Okay, so I'm going to be using black memento ink for the washing line and I'm just going to stamp it this way, take the ink to the stamp. It's a little bit easier with a big long stamp like this and I can really see then that I've got it stamped up properly. Oh, and actually what I realized is I didn't want to take off my masking tape from the sides because I don't want my <coughs> washing line to go all the way to the sides, to the edges of the cardstock. So I'm actually just gonna put these back on real quick on the side. Grab a couple of them so that I don't get um, the washing line going off over the edge. So just ink this up a little bit more in case it tried. There we go. Now I can stamp it some. But if you remember, you can do this before you take your um, masking paper off the first time. So this way, then I don't get the washing line hanging off the edge, which is what I wanted. Now there's this little um, bow that I'm going to do on the ends. I know washing lines don't typically have these, but I thought it would be cute. So I'll just do one of these on each end. Like that. And then I'm also going to do the, um, the sentiment down at the bottom right corner. And you could do this with the Stamparatus if you wanted to make sure that you've got a nice solid image. But I think I'll be right. What's nice about this um, image is the big love is nice and um, solid. So it does give a nice solid image. And I'm going to kind of go off the bottom a little bit. I'm going to stand up so I can make sure I get it straight. And hands, big feet. I'm going to hold it just for a few seconds with nice even pressure just to make sure the ink gets absorbed into the paper. There we go. Perfect. Now I can start kind of building my scene with all my little pieces. So I've got some of them cut out already and we can just kind of arrange them. So I've got some clouds and a sun and I'll show you where I I cut those from. So the clouds are from this. Let's see where did I put it? Here we go. The clouds are from this set of dies called Give It a Whirl. And this is for actually doing an interactive card. You can tell this is the wheel. Um, and it comes with lots of different images. There's actually another whole sheet. So um, of all these different images. There was a circle but it was a little bit big so I didn't use that for the sun but I did use two of the clouds and then the sun I actually used this die set Tasteful Labels which is an awesome um, set of dies just for doing all your sentiment tags. It's got um, a really nice selection of size and shape and some of them have stitching and some of them just have kind of like a indented border. So I use this little die here for the sun. So we have those. So we can put those on in a minute. And then for the onesies, now I've cut, die cut a few. I had some left over from the last card. I've got a pink one and I've got a pale papaya, but 
I also have some scraps here I thought I would cut another couple and then we can decide which ones to use. So I've got because I wanted some different colours in here. So I've got a green, this mint macaron, and this is um, not sure this is Daffodil Delight or So Saffron. So I've got the yellow Daffodil Delight. Um, so I'm going to grab my little onesie die, which is so cute. Now, of course, you could also stamp the images. You could use the um, you could use these little images too, and the bib, and stamp them and die cut them out and hang them from the washing line. But I thought it would be fun to show you how to use the paper. So let me grab my. Um, Big shot and my baby boss, I call it my baby bossing machine. And we'll die cut a couple more of the pieces. And the nice thing about the design of series paper, because it's thin, is we should be able to do it's thick, thinner than the regular cardstock. We should should be able to die cut two at once. So we'll just do that. So cute. I love the stripes. And I'm going to put that to one side, but we will need it to make the little once I decide which um, ones is I'm going to use. So I'll bring back this. So I don't need that one anymore. Um, I don't know if you notice in this one but that these cute little um, flowers, hearts in her pocket. So I will need to die cut those. So I kind of like let's see which ones we want to use. The green is pretty and the pink. I didn't use a pink one last time. And the yellow I think. I think I'll do those three. So then I need, and look at these bibs, I made these little bibs too. That you could also put, hang on there. You could put one inside maybe. So let's die cut. Um, I need some mint macaron. And I've got some back stock scraps here. I need in that background, I need Blushing Bride, which is the pink. And actually, I've got so saffron, but I think that'll be fine. And then I'm going to grab my pocket. And the pockets actually will cut two at a time. And I need a flower. And a heart. You get two flowers, but only one heart. So let's put that to one side. And let's see, I'm going to do yellow pockets. I should have another pocket somewhere because I did cut two, but I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> More pockets. And I'll do a green flower. Where'd it go? 
Oh, there it is. <laughs> and a pink pot. And then what will be our die cutting hole done, I think. on. So I'm just going to put, um, let's see, I'll put the star. I'm going to just put a little dab of glue kind of where I want them. So the pocket's going to go right there. Parts will go on the other side. Flower will do in the middle. And I'm actually going to use my take your pick tool to just pick them up. Oh. This take your pick tool is awesome. It's got a little bit of putty at the end, so it just enables you to pick things up easily and place them where you want them. I'll save that little pocket for another card. Alright, so if I can zoom in a little bit. Alright, so now we can start to build the card. So I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of these onesies. Flip them all over. And then we'll just position these. So I've got to be careful I don't, um, oh, my little pocket came off, fix that, hope the others didn't come off, no, they look good, come here, okay, so I'm going to put this one on first and make sure I don't cover up any of the sentiment. This one's going to go this end. Like that. And then I'm going to put this one on next. And then I can kind of center this one in the middle. So if you're putting three on of something, on any kind of card, do the outside ones first. And then you can oops, center the last one in the middle. I'll do this one here. And the pink one in the middle. Actually, it's not really, there's only just room for this one anyway, so. Okay. Yeah, so that one just fits in the middle perfectly. Now we're going to add those cute little clothes pins or clothes pegs as we call them in the UK and there's a little die oops, um, that comes in in the die set this one right here and it cuts out these cute two little cute clothes pins now there is a stamp also if you don't want to be bothered with that there is um, a stamp that stamps out these two clothes pins at the same time and they're just spaced perfectly so that you can um, hang your clothes on the washing line so you can do that too but I thought I'd show you these cute little pins so I have them die cut already and I'm going to <laughs> I can just keep them organized here I've got them in my little my little pot here so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to just grab some out of here and I'm going to use my take your pick tool again I'm going to put a little tiny dot of glue so I need six. I think I die cut a couple extras. 
we go. Or six. So I'll see if I can do this without losing any of them. And then we'll put on the clouds and the sun last. So again, I'm just going to put a little tiny, I'm going to work from left to right. Um, and I'm going to just put a tiny little dab of glue on each, the top of each onesie. Just like this. And then we'll just go along with the, um, um, I'll grab my take your pick tool. And I should just be able to pick those up. Put them on. You can just angle them a little bit how, how you like. But I'm starting from left going from left to right that way I don't mess up the ones I've already done. Hopefully I don't get my fingers in the glue. And this glue, you just need a tiny dab of this glue, it's very strong. So. Now you could use glue dots also, but they're actually a little big for this, whereas these a little dab of glue, a little dab will do it, as they say. So there we go, that's those. Now um, we will put the clouds. Now you can put this onto the card base. In fact, I'm just thinking maybe I should have put this onto the card base first. Because um, it's easier to put the adhesive on the back when it's flat, but that's okay. Um, we will be fine. So now I'm just going to put some, I'm going to stick this sun down flat. I'm going to put a little dab of glue into the back of the sun right here. I'll put this on flat and then I'm going to add the clouds with dimensionals. So I'll just put this little sun about right here. Like that. And then grab a couple more dimensionals. Make some mini ones this time. Couple in each cloud. And then we just have to attach it to the base. Now I'm using a white base, but you could use, you know, depending on if it's a boy or girl, you could obviously vary the colors on here so we'll just put this one I like it so it's kind of hanging over the edge of the sponging a little bit but I thought these little clouds were so cute so growing up we always um, we didn't really have it well we had a some kind of a clothes dryer but it was really just for emergencies because it used so much electricity and we always hung our washing out. Well, my mom always hung the washing out on the line. And I can remember there would be like a big family effort if it suddenly started to rain and all the clothes were out on the line. We'd all have to run out quickly to help get all the clothes in before they got wet. All right, so let's see. What did I do with the card base? I have it here. So this is just a Whisper White, no, Whisper White, Basic White um, card base that is... Um, it's eight and a half by five and a half and then it's scored at um, four and a quarter so then this is five and a half by four and a quarter and I'm just going to put this on and actually I think I'll use dimensionals to pop it up a little bit and peel these off So yes, I have many memories of, we'd just be sitting down to dinner or something, and then um, all of a sudden one of us would go, oh no, it's raining. So we'd all have to put our dinner, our knives and forks down and rush out to get the, um, the washing in. Let's see, did I get more? Yes. So I'll just put this into the front. And then there's just one little last detail that we need to do. 
and that is to put a little bit of Wink of Stella onto the little the flower of the heart in the pocket. So just to have a little bit of sparkle if you wanted to add some embellishments. You definitely could, but I thought the card was pretty busy anyway. But I thought a little bit of sparkle, and maybe a little bit of sparkle on the clouds. That would be fun too. I guess the sun, the sun would have been good to add some. There we go. So that is it. Let me bring back in the other one and we can look at them both. Just very slightly different um, colours. Well, we've just got a different one in the middle. So I'm going to say you could vary the, the colours um, depending on whether it's a girl or boy. And you could also use these little, um, these little tiny bibs instead if you wanted. These are very cute. Um, but anyway, so a great idea for using up some of your scraps, and I think it just adds a little bit more to the card. Um, and if you don't fancy doing all that stamping and stamping and die cutting, then this is a good um, option. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the card, and I hope you'll give that a try. And I will look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye bye.